Since going on sale in 2014, the Porsche Macan has been the best upmarket compact SUV you could buy. It does all the everyday and family stuff very well, but to drive, it has always been a cut above. And now, five years after the Macan first arrived, Porsche has given it its first facelift. The front has had a bit of a nip and tuck, but it's at the rear of the car that you'll see the biggest difference. There's now a full width light bar to tie the Macan in to the bigger KN as well as the Panamera. There are plenty of updates beneath the skin as well. This is the mid-range Macan S, and it gets a new engine, plus revised suspension for even sharper handling, and an updated infotainment system too. The Macan S starts at £48,750, so it's not exactly bargain basement. However, it's only £2,500 more than the entry-level Macan with its four-cylinder engine, so expect lots of buyers to upgrade to the S as a matter of course. Now, since 2014, close to 400,000 Macans have been sold, so it's pretty clear the market likes it. Porsche says driving dynamics remain the primary focus, even though the Macan is no sports car. Its chassis has been tweaked, as Porsche puts it, to further optimize the responsiveness and comfort levels. The four-wheel drive system has been revised for the same reason. Air suspension is available as an option, but this car sits on conventional coil springs. Now, the engine in this Macan S is still a three-liter V6 with a turbocharger, but there is a new engine. The turbo in this new unit sits in the valley formed by the two banks of cylinders for faster throttle response. Now, how Porsche is that? We're talking about throttle response on an SUV. The motor develops 349 brake horsepower, which is enough to shove this car to 62 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds and on to 157 miles per hour. The only gearbox option is a seven-speed PDK twin clutch. A decade ago, Porsche did offer manual transmissions on its SUVs, but those days are long gone. Now, the Macan has always had a very good cabin, and of course, nothing has really changed there. In Porsche's other five-door models, the KN and the Panamera, you get this real sense of solidity about the whole cockpit. This Macan isn't quite the same, but generally, it's still an excellent cabin. What I really like is the seating position. So often in higher riding cars in SUVs, you feel as though you're sat upright with your feet pressing down on the pedals. But in this car, your legs are way out in front of you. You sit reclined with the steering wheel right out towards your chest. You feel like you're in a conventional car. The Macan really is a compact SUV though, so while there is space for the whole family, your grown-up kids or taller friends won't thank you for making them sit in the rear for very long journeys. The boot offers 500 litres of storage capacity, that's decent, but a little less than you'll find in most of its direct rivals. The infotainment system has been completely updated, there's now a new touchscreen system which is really intuitive to use. Beautifully rendered display as well, I really like that. Now, this cabin is half a decade old now, which means it still has these two banks of switches here, whereas the Panamera and the KN, they have a very shiny, very slick looking black plastic panel with pressure sensitive buttons. It looks great, that system, but it's just not particularly intuitive to use. I think these buttons are far simpler. Standard kit is very generous as well. You've got nav, you've got Apple CarPlay, you've got lane departure warning, lots and lots of stuff, as you'd expect of a 50,000 pound car. Now, because this is a compact SUV, it's not particularly intimidating to drive in town. If you're in a KN or any other full-size SUV, you're well aware of how much road you're taking up. This thing feels appreciably smaller. In fact, to drive through town, it feels similar to a saloon car. The ride quality is good. There's a tension, a slight connectedness to the ride, so it isn't super plush, but it's a long way from being too firm. This car's got the optional adaptive dampers. They cost 816 pounds, and they help just to smooth the ride out a little bit. If you want the smoothest ride quality possible, you can, of course, upgrade to the optional air suspension. The S is far from being the fastest or sportiest Macan on sale, but it is still very good to drive nonetheless. It's just so cohesive. Tall cars like this very often feel disjointed and lazy, but this Macan S really doesn't. It actually feels much more like a low riding car to drive. It's got such accurate and responsive steering, good body control. It doesn't feel aloof. It doesn't feel lazy in any way, actually. It's seriously impressive. In fact, 
you almost forget that you're driving an SUV and then when you switch into sport or sport plus mode using the dial down here and then fiddle with the damper stiffness down here you can sharpen its responses even further to a point where it actually starts to feel a little bit like a hot hatch. In terms of how it drives, the Macan really is the Porsche of compact SUVs. The V6 is powerful, it makes the car feel really brisk, but actually what's much more important for this sort of machine is that the drivetrain is refined, the engine is smooth, it's not too loud, the PDK gearbox is very smooth, particularly in automatic mode. Often these gearboxes can be very jerky, this one really isn't. And then you've got that four-wheel drive system as well, which particularly in wet weather gives that extra layer of security. It all means that this Macan S is a kind of effortless car to use day to day. On the motorway you do notice a slightly exaggerated amount of tyre noise. You've got four very fat tyres hitting the road, but generally it's exceptionally good to drive. Porsche reckons you'll get 32 miles per gallon in mixed driving, acceptable for a quick SUV, but no more. With this facelift, Porsche has subtly ramped up every one of the Macan's qualities without taking anything away. It's therefore still very much the class leader. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel now. And remember to head to cargurus.co.uk because that's where you will find the used car you're looking for from a top-rated dealer.